whatever type of radio you want to make, whether it's music or talk based, it often makes sense to plan out your shows in advance to make sure that you're producing the best possible content. And the best way to achieve this is to use a well-structured radio script. In this video, we're going to share our top five tips that professional radio stations use to write scripts which keep their listeners engaged and coming back again and again. Number five, choosing the right type of script. Just like TV and other forms of media, there are different formats within radio. So as a result, there's not one set format that you need to follow. Ultimately, the type of script you write depends on the type of show you're presenting. For example, if you're presenting a talk show, you'll need topics and a structure to allow the whole show to flow smoothly. Talk radio shows are typically an hour long, so filling all of that time with interesting and engaging content for your listeners is really important. So it's important to pick topics and plan out what you're going to cover within that time frame. Primarily, there are two types of scripts that are the most common, which are talk and music. So let's compare them and see which is right for you. Typically, a talk radio script is all spoken word. It centers around your topics and the story you're trying to tell. So it's beneficial to script out your talking points. Firstly, split up your script into sections. Like any good story, it has to have a topic, a start, a middle and an end. So choose a topic you want to cover. It'll run as a theme throughout your show. So make sure it's something that you're comfortable discussing for long periods of time you need to be able to talk confidently and authoritatively about this topic for an extended period. The first part of your script should introduce this topic, summarizing it for your listeners. The middle part is the real meat of what you're talking about. So this is where you can go into plenty of detail and go off on tangents as well. And finally, the ending should bring all of these points you've been making together to provide some sort of closure or summary for the listener. So now let's look at music scripts. Now, just like a talk script, a music script focuses on storytelling, but in a slightly different manner. A music show is much more likely to cover lots of different little topics in between tracks. These things are what we call links, and the stronger the links are, the stronger the show will be. So, for example, a presenter will introduce a certain topic, which somehow relates to the track that they're about to play, then they'll play the track, and then after that track's played, they'll pick another topic which links the next track to the previous topic or track that was played. So now let's look at that in a little bit more detail. So the basic structure of a music show is something like this. First, the jingle is played. This sets up the scene and introduces the show and the presenter. This is followed up by an introduction which sets up the show itself. So this covers things like what's coming up throughout the show, any competitions, any guests, so on and so forth. Then a track is introduced and played, and any listeners that have enjoyed that will be interested to know a bit of trivia around that track. So it's a good opportunity to talk about the artist or the band. And then this provides you with a smooth transition into the next track that you're going to play. And most music radio shows will typically repeat this process over and over throughout the entirety of the show. So they'll play a jingle, an intro, song, and then a bit of trivia. And they do this to accommodate new listeners who may be tuning in halfway through a broadcast. So they can get to know the station, the name of the presenter, and, you know, what's coming up in the rest of the show itself. So number four, let's look at setting the scene. Now, this is incredibly important in radio. Whether you're breaking a news story or telling a joke on your show, you need to remember that listeners don't have the same visual aids that you get from TV and online video. This doesn't mean you have to describe every single detail, but you do need to give your listener enough to set the scene in their minds. For example, let's say you're presenting a rock and roll show. Today's topic could be something like fun facts that people might not know about famous bands. So you could introduce the show something like this. Hi and welcome to r and Radio, the best place to hear rock and roll legends all day long. I'm your host Mike and today we've got a jam-packed show for you with some legendary tracks by Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix and The Doors. And here's a fun fact about The Doors that you might not know. 
But prior to achieving mega stardom, The Doors were the house band at LA's Whiskey A Go Go alongside bands like Steppenwolf. Now we've got lots more interesting and cool facts coming up like that about your favourite rock bands throughout the show, but before we get into that, let's listen to Steppenwolf's Born To Be Wild. So an introduction like this is called an anchor intro. It quickly sets up your show or the story you're trying to tell and puts it into context without going into too much detail or even giving too much away so listeners know what to expect and are engaged enough to continue listening. So let's look at this live in action from the Charlie Perry Show on Manchester Live. You are listening to MCR Live, aka the most generous radio and podcast network around ever ever to have been known by planet earth so on the afternoon show i like to tell you about some of the events and things whatever's going down i also like to give stuff away so you know skiddle yeah the ones that uh help us produce the rundown which is our weekly podcast which tells you what's going on in manchester well they are turning 16 16 years old and they are having a birthday party and guess what tickets are actually free to go to it except it's a first come first serve basis and it's going to be uber popular so basically what we're giving away are free tickets that are going to get you guaranteed entrance they have got some absolutely insane apps there which means you're basically going to get some really cool DJ sets, some really cool gigs and performances for free. And the best thing about it is we've got loads of tickets to give away as well. Let me tell you a little bit more about what will be going down that evening with Skiddle on their birthday party after this by my ultimate girl crush, Jessie Ware. This is 110% on MCR Live. So, as you just heard, the presenter gave an overview about what's coming up in the show. It was short and snappy in just under a minute, but it quickly set up the tone of the show without diving into too much detail. This helps to give the show a sense of direction and it helps to keep your listeners on board. Number three, write your script as though you're speaking it aloud. Reading from a script can sometimes make you sound a bit unnatural or you can come across as a bit stiff or robotic. And that's really a big mistake. A script needs to sound natural and it needs to flow when it's being read out. And a lot of presenters do make the mistake of writing their scripts very formally and then reading it out in that same manner. You know, and like I said, the most important thing when it comes to radio is that it sounds natural and that it flows and that your listeners feel as though they're part of the show as well. And if they feel like they're being read to off a script, then that's not really going to help that situation. So next, let's look at some of the common pitfalls that you should try and avoid when you're presenting. First up, talking too quickly. If you speak too fast, then listeners can often struggle to catch what you've actually said. On the flip side to that, if you speak too slowly, you can sound a little bit monotonous and boring. So it's really important to try and find an equilibrium, a good balance between too fast and too slow. Next, it's really important to try and get the balance of your voice just right. So shouting or getting too loud can really put people off. And likewise, talking too quietly or not loud enough makes it impossible for people to actually hear what you're saying. So again, you need to really try and find a good balance between too loud and too quiet. Thirdly, no one really likes listening to someone that's droning on. So this goes back to what I was saying originally about talking too fast or too slow. But you also need to try and inject passion and enthusiasm into your voice. Because if you don't sound like you care about what you're talking about, then why should your listeners care about listening to you? And lastly, try not to second guess or question yourself too much. This can make you sound really indecisive and it can put people off, especially on live radio. As I've mentioned earlier, you need to sound authoritative in what you're saying. So let's look at an example of how not to read a script. Now this example is taken from our How to Be a Great Radio Presenter course that we recently published with Kate Cocker, who is an industry expert on this stuff. That is the sound from the 1975. I'm Tim. This is Station FM. So I told you that I would give you a story about embarrassment yesterday. This particular occasion is about when I picked up the children after school. 
I was late because I had been asleep on the sofa. I ran to school as quick as I could, at which point you're required to give a reason as to your lateness. My options were to tell the truth or to maybe lie and give a reason that might sound normal, like I was held up at the office, for example. I chose to tell the truth and proceeded to tell the teacher that I'd been asleep. He looked a bit perplexed, like I had two heads, and said, Do you know what I'll do? I'll just write down parental incompetence. I mean, I knew I was incompetent, but to see it written down in black and white in an official document, that's another thing altogether. Now, that really is a textbook example of how not to read something on the radio. It was boring and, you know, you can tell that he was just reading it straight from a script and there was zero life or passion breathed into it. You know, as I mentioned, you should always write with the thought of speaking naturally and having a good flow in mind. You know, and alternatively, if you're given a script to read from, make some notes and read through it a couple of times so you're comfortable enough to say it in your own words and in your own voice. And you should also really try and pace yourself. You know, it's not a race. You know, you really do need to treat it more like a conversation with a friend. You know, for example, you, you wouldn't shout at your friends, so why do it to your listeners? They want to hear engaging content, so keep it lively and keep it fun. And finally, make sure you know what you're saying. So, like I said, read through your scripts before saying it. This way, you won't question it as you're reading it out. So, let's now look at another example, but this time, done right. And actually, before we do that, I just want to point out, if you do want to take Kate's course, then head to radio.co forward slash courses, and if you input the code SECRETPRESENTER50, you'll get 50% off Kate's course. The course itself is absolutely packed full of tips like this, and ultimately, Kate is one of the leading industry experts around radio presenting. She's worked with all of the biggest DJs and stations in the UK, so it really is an invaluable course, and I can't recommend taking it enough. So let's get back to the presentation now and look at that example that I just mentioned. Cracking tune from the killers. If you thought that was good, just you wait till I blow the cobwebs off 10 amazing 80s records a little bit later on on Station FM. But next, I have got to tell you about something that happened yesterday. Now, have you ever gone crimson in public? Have you ever felt pure shame and embarrassment? Well, I did yesterday. I felt like the worst dad on planet Earth. And I'll tell you why next. So now let's move on to tip number two. Keep it simple. Whenever you write a script, you really do need to try and keep it as simple as possible. Adopt the KISS method. This stands for keep it simple stupid. And it basically means don't add any fluff or unnecessary words into your sentences that don't add to what you're trying to actually say. You know, as I've constantly reiterated throughout this presentation, radio shows are at their best when they sound natural whether they're fully scripted or not. So make sure your grammar is concise and your scripts are succinct and to the point because this will allow you to actually improvise and expand on what you've written. And our final tip, mix things up. Now, the great thing about broadcasting your own radio show is that you can experiment. You can see what works and what doesn't. You know, you can really mix things up. So why not try changing your show's runtime or its format? For example, you know, you could feature an artist in an hourly slot, playing some music from their back catalogue and talking about the things that have inspired them. Or you could try presenting a show that is focused around a certain period in history. So it could be music or from the 60s or 70s or even from the 80s. And this also gives you the ability to go off on tangents and, you know, introduce some interesting facts and fun trivia for your audience you know but the point is ultimately it's really good to try and just mix things up sometimes you know it gives your show a different flavor and ultimately bringing in new segments to your shows helps to keep your audience interested and engaged so there we have it hopefully these five tips will help you write awesome scripts for your radio shows and don't forget to let us know in the comments below what's worked for you and if you haven't already started your station with radio.co, then head to try.radio.co and begin your seven day trial today. <laughs>